all, welcome to the Lens Flare Filter Lesson. And I challenge you to say that three times fast. <laughs> it's not easy to do. Here's my layout that I made. I'm making a book um, with some uh, sayings in it. And uh, this is a layout for that book. I challenge you to do these in your real scrapbook pages though and really think outside the box. Uh, you know you can do it. There's a little trick that you have to utilize with this filter. Um, without knowing the little trick, uh, it's very difficult to figure this filter out on your own. But once um, I show this to you, I think we're gonna find that uh, you all are gonna give us some really cool things uh, using this filter, and I'm anxious to see uh, what everyone else can do with it. Um, let's zoom in a little bit on my layout, uh, I'm on my image, and I'm going to take off a few of these layers here so you can see uh, what, there's another one up here, let's take off this one. This is what my original photo looks like. Um, we were inside of a cave and my husband was standing there um, in the light. And uh, here is a, whoops, wrong one. Let's do this one. This is the filter that I decided to use uh, for this layout that I made. And um, I didn't think that everything was bright enough, so I added a, uh, a new adjustment layer for brightness and contrast right here. And I think that really made everything stand out more. But then I just felt it needed a little bit more. And so I did add this new adjustment layer for a pattern to put some texture on there. And uh, you changed it to the vivid light blending mode and the opacity of 59%. That's what gives it that texture that made it look really cool. But that's not part of the lesson, so I'm not gonna go into great detail on how to do that. Just wanted to show you what, uh, what was inside my layers. I had this other one here, uh, another uh, lens flare. And as you can see, it's really cool. I really liked it. I like the lines, how it comes out from it. But if you do a before and after, um, for me, when I added that, this uh, silhouette of my husband didn't have enough contrast with it and, and uh, kind of took away from it, and so I decided not to use it. I really fought myself, didn't know whether to use it or not, but I wanted to add that there to show you uh, what else that you could do with this uh, filter. There are lots of ideas you can use with this filter. I'm going to show you how to use that first on this uh, photo I took, and um, I like to go to wineries, yes, <laughs> anybody who reads my blog might, might know that, and I like um, using this lens flare on photos of glasses, anywhere that the sun is going to shine through and make a glare on something. Um, it's going to be a great thing for you to utilize the lens flare on. Um, of course, you saw I, I was able to use it on a photo in the cave, but um, let's uh, start with this one. Here's the lens flare I made. You can see what a difference it, it, it makes. It makes it look like the sun is hitting right here on um, the uh, th coming right through the picture and onto the glass. In order to use the lens flare filter, make a new layer. Well, before we do that, let's unlock this one and let me show you why you just can't uh, use it very well directly on your layer. Go to Filter, Render, Lens Flare, and you're going to see immediately you can't see the uh, where you're going with the lens filter and what it looks. I mean I can put it wherever I want on here and hit OK 
and it's got it on there, but it's permanently on there. And um, we like to be able to do things so that we can uh, change them and adjust them and make them so they're not so permanent. So I'm going to hit undo with that. So we have here the new layer I made and you can fill that layer with black however you know to fill it with. Um, you can fill it with the paint bucket or hit alt backspace on your keyboard and you're going to see that uh, the foreground color now has filled in that new layer with black. And this is what I'm going to utilize to put my lens flare on. I'm going to go to the filter drop down menu, render, and then lens flare. Now you have some choices here. Um, this is supposed to emulate various types of lenses uh, that create different types of flare um, that can be attached to by professional cameras. I don't think you really need to know the difference in each of these. You just kind of have to play with it to see what each of these does and then go on from there. Um, the first one, uh, let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger and run it so you can see what type of flare it's going to make. Let's go do the next one so we can have a little bit of a comparison. This one always has these little uh, bright lights that didn't look good. Let me go do it again. Let's change the center of it, make it a little bit brighter. Well, that's what that one looks like, but if you can see, it generally always has these little things shooting out on them. And then we're going to go to the next one, and you can see how it's even much brighter, and it generally looks more like this. So you just have to play around with it and learn uh, what each of them does and the last one is your movie one and it makes those really bright lines that's what I utilized on this extra one that I decided not to use on uh, my layout so let's hit undo and go through the process a little bit more what you're going to do is be watching the little preview here and for mine, I think, well, I don't remember what I decided to use. I kind of like this one, the 105 millimeter prime, because it seems to be the softest one. Your brightness definitely changes how um, much of the lens flare you have. So sometimes it hel it's helpful to go through here and just move it around until something strikes you. Now, for me, um, I've actually been playing with this on several different uh, photos. I had a photo um, before this one where the window was to my right side. It was over here and I knew that my light source was over here. And so I intentionally clicked down on this crosshair in the middle and moved it so that my lighting came from that side because that matched the photo. Let's see. Yeah, I like this one best. I seem to use it most. Um, and so that's where I put it um, when I was putting my uh, light source onto that photo I took. Now, for this photo that we're working with, I knew for a fact that the light source, we were under a uh, a roof and um, the light source was coming from uh, actually dead on and so that's why I moved the it to the center for this particular image um, you know in digital scrapbooking we always tell you that most of the light sources come from the upper right and you know often they do 
and that's kind of the standard that we use for drop shadows and whatnot and layouts but I'm going to challenge you to think outside of the box and actually consider your photo and and you were the one that took that photo so think about where you were standing and where you really want that light to um, be coming from in your photo so for this one I did this here and I think I had it a little bit less bright and I clicked OK and now I have my lens flare there on my black and then when you choose the blending mode for screen it um, allows you to see the image below everything that is black on that layer then disappears because of the way this particular blending mode works and that's the little tip the little secret that I have for you make a layer with black and use the screen blending mode now what we can do with this if it isn't quite centered or quite where I want it to be I'm gonna hit control T to bring up the transform which is actually the move tool same thing and let's say I wanted to move this lighting so it hit my glass right there I could do that um, but then uh, in this it doesn't always happen but in this instance you see a line um, you know I can just resize this But this allows you, and, and not always do you have to resize it like that. Um, I've done plenty where I, I think it's how big you make your light source, how bright you make it. But I've done plenty where I've moved them around to various places. And so, in fact, this one I think, no, I don't think it was that much easier to move around. I didn't actually didn't move it at all. Oh, there we go. See, here's your idea. Now I have a little uh, lighting hitting down in the middle of the wine glass. And if I wanted to, I could take this and, and just keep playing with it until I got it so it looked good moving it and resizing it. Now there's another idea. You can put a little sparkle in the bottom of your, it doesn't have to be a wine glass, and your tea glass. Or maybe you're going to have somebody who is standing and holding a glass um, and you want to put a little flare uh, on that glass. Uh, maybe it could be a twinkle in somebody's eye. I want you to start thinking about how you can utilize this. So let's go back to this layout and I'm going to go ahead and um, take off some of these layers and show you how to work it with this. Um, Alt Backspace and I filled it in with black and I still have that texture on there. Let's take that off for right now. And go to the Filter drop-down menu render lens flare and I'm not really sure because I made this layout about a week ago and I did have the light source um, coming from up the, this way almost centered I think I don't think it was that one yeah, it might have been this one again I really don't remember but let's just play and this is how I created mine I think I did have it centered maybe down a little bit more in the center and click OK hit the uh, screen blending mode and um, control T so I can move this around and I actually then I think brought this down this is a lot bigger than the one I made and I just kept playing with it till I got something I liked there we go and actually this one has the little purple and blues in it which I didn't like so let's hit undo and see if I can remember more what I did 
or find something that'll work better. I think it was too, let's try this one, the first one. Click OK, blending mode of screen. There, that might be the one I had for this one, that first one, Control T. And I really don't know what I had. I just kept playing until I got something. And you can see then that right there makes something um, fairly artistic. And then I added it to brighten it. And then I added some texture to mine. But um, you can see uh, it took me a little while probably to get the exact thing I liked, and this is the one I had with my text again. Don't ask me where I used, what I used, and what light source I used. I just played until I found something I liked. <laughs> and that's what you have to do with this tutorial, with, with this uh, filter. Um, and the more you play with it, uh, the more you're going to understand what it does and what the concepts are. And if you need to, you can go in here then and take down the opacity if you don't like uh, the flare to be so much. Anyway, I look forward to seeing what you can do with this lesson, and I hope you have fun with it as much as I did.